What does Kurt have for us today? More Pokemon VGC cheating, where the Sydney Regional Champion is a confirmed hacker. The stupidity of the Pokemon community to deny that cheating gives an advantage. It just gets worse and worse as we have more stuff like this to where you cannot win without cheating. That has been proven time and time again. Every non-Japanese world champion is a confirmed cheater. Every popular VGC player like Wolf Glick is a confirmed cheater. And now it's gotten so bad that no one is posting their teams because they're all getting caught. But we also have people like Paul Chua, confirmed cheater. Azazel, confirmed cheater. And then others, even though it kind of like flags as a legitimate team, we know they have cheated in the past, like Marcus, like Wolfie. You cannot win without hacking Pokemon, because it turns out having hundreds of hours of experience over an opponent is a competitive advantage. So let's see what happened with the Sydney Regional Champion. Champion with an obvious generated team, 6 IV wild encounters, yeah that just never happens, 4 different trainers with the exact same default trainer ID. Remember 993401. So that's a new kind of cheating weirdness that seems to be popping up to where they have different trainer names, but the same IDs. Also, 508 EVs, which we have already confirmed for a long time now that this is a very strong sign of cheating because the cheating programs don't put in the unnecessary EVs. Hartford Regionals Champion did not share their winning team's code, so we have this person right here. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, it's because they're cheating like everyone else. Their other rentals from Season 6 are gen, lack of hyper training, and mints. Also, we have signs of trade botting. All were sourced from the same original trainer, but different game versions and 508. Like, with how much this has been catching cheaters, you'd imagine it would change, but no, it doesn't. Portland Regionals, second place, 6 IV wild captures, no RNG manipulation, one was generated with their original trainer. That way they can just point to it and be like, see, I'm not just sourcing hacked Pokemon that are unchecked, one of these is mine, nope, all are gen hacked because you, you can't get 6 IV wild captures, that RNG just does not exist. 32 to the power of 6 is 1 in a billion. Not when hyper training exists, but they're just getting like emboldened with their cheating because they know they're not going to get caught. But also the weird thing is they're scared of getting caught because we can see that team sharing has plummeted because so many people are getting caught with cheats. Pretty common to see generated Pokemon get last minute move changes and not get 3 for 3 PP ups for that move. Inconsistency is suspicious. Yep, we're also seeing just like a lot of lazy cheating over the last forever when it comes to Pokemon. And now this is where things get pretty wild. In the Korean Trainers Cup for 2023, three of the top four players who qualified for the final round shared rental teams. First place deleted the rental team after getting disqualified. So in Asia, where this is actually taken seriously, the cheaters get disqualified. So much like how we saw everyone cheating, including Wolf Glick for the 2020 Players' Cups, it's still happening for the Korean and Asian Trainers' Cups as well. So third and fourth place shared their rental teams and had Gen Pokemon. Second place didn't share code. Guess who wins the finals because of first place getting disqualified? You can't win without cheating. Top four of the Korean Trainers' Cup, all cheating. The difference is, it's actually punished in Asia. It's illegal in Japan. If you get caught cheating a Japanese Pokemon tournament, you have to refund the prize money. Now people are saying a lot of things like, oh, we can't wait to see what happens with worlds being in Japan this year and everyone getting caught. I, I don't think it's going to be like that dramatic, but it just kind of like shows the difference. That people say, oh, if there's nothing wrong with cheating, then why don't players get punished? They do. The problem is with the Pokemon Company International, it's all corruption. We have cheaters like Aaron Zhang, like Ray Rizzo, looking out for their friends, like Wolf Glick, so it's all corrupt. We have the director for Global Esports of the Pokemon Company doing nothing about the 100% confirmed cheaters in these events. People will then say that the rules need to be changed, but that will never happen because the developers are against cheating. Surprise, Game Freak and Nintendo and the Pokemon Company does not want you hacking their game under any circumstance, which is why cheating is wrong. And then it also gives a massive advantage. You can further prove this with a simple question. Why does Wolfie 
lie about his cheating if there's nothing wrong with it. These are the rules. They are clear cut. There is no ambiguity. There is no such thing as a legal hack. There is no such thing as a legal gend Pokemon. The use of external devices, such as a mobile app, to modify or create items or Pokemon in a player's battle team is forbidden. That's it. Any modification. Pokemon is immediately illegal. That's it. End of story. Doesn't matter if the Pokemon is traded for either. And we are only seeing these issues outside of Japan. So then there's like a lot of deeper corruption and obscuring all of this like insane cheating that just never stops from the rest of the Pokemon company. But again, we are also at least seeing punishments. And then that further debunks the idiots that say hacking Pokemon is not cheating because we have seen punishments. They prop up these players, and when it turns out that they're liars, cheaters, and thieves, you gotta cover it up or else your whole scene is going to collapse. And then people say, well, yeah, you can't punish cheaters or you lose everything. Well, that's what needs to happen. That if your scene only exists because of cheating, it doesn't deserve to exist at all. And then with Regulation D, external game transfers will be legal for tournament play. Certain species that are tedious to obtain, Zero IV Enamorous, will likely amplify a player's desire to break the rules and obtain generated teams. I expect fewer high-performing rentals going forward. And we've already seen a major hacking problem with tedious Pokemon. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, there's no mechanics to increase IVs in wild Pokemon, yet many players had wild Pokemon with six flawless IVs. So that was happening back in the beginning of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It's still happening now. And then just like this crazy stat that makes everything make sense. Half the teams with Golden Go were hacked. 22 of the 25 were naturally six IV, including the zero on the attack. It's not possible. So if it felt like the meta was destabilized day one because everyone just somehow had a perfect competitive Golden Go, well, that's because most of them were hacked. And the same thing was going on with the Paradox Pokemon. This also shows how cheating ruins the game for everyone, including cheaters, that if you hack Pokemon and you complain about the state of the meta, you are the problem because the game does not have the capacity for this fast of development. It should not be a zero IV Golden Go in every game. It should not be if you have some kind of like small problem with your team or Pokemon that you can immediately just make a new team to then change the meta every couple of minutes. This problem has been very apparent in recent Pokemon games like Pokemon Sword and Shield and especially with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that there's like daily meta changes if not just like multiple times a day there's major shifts in what people are running because they're just hacking brand new teams. So it's impossible for the legitimate player to keep up and then that gets even worse inside of VGC. And then keeping up with cheating, giving an advantage, and then tracking the prize money. Most of the prize money, most of the winnings in VGC are going to cheaters. Once again, further proving that it's a problem. It just keeps on going. It's not changing. But I have always done the right thing when it comes to Pokemon, and I will continue to do the right thing when it comes to Pokemon. Cheating is wrong. Lying is wrong. Stealing is wrong. Most of the Pokemon community struggles with those facts, but I will not cave. Eventually, this will get a mainstream pickup. Eventually, someone will care, and then maybe we'll actually be able to play Pokemon. Because, like, Pokemon's dead. Pokemon's dead in the West. No one wants to play it because everyone's getting cheated against, and then the only people defending it are the scumbag cheaters. This is the only form of competition in all of sports and esports where cheating gets so much support, and then we don't have a scene because of it. It sucks, but at least Kurt is still finding more evidence and finding more cheaters, including first place regional champions. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.